I'm talking about. So, you'll notice that this is the sound post here. It's basically, you know, it's a piece of wood that's used to help support the top of the instrument from the tension of the strings across the bridge. Now, we all know that as the strings vibrate, the vibrations travel down through the bridge, travel through the top, and are amplified in this box here, and then, they, then it comes out the F-holes. So if we move this post you know, in different positions, you're changing the tension points. And then changing the tension points changes the sound. So now I am going to tell you how I adjust a violin. You know, there's no set way in which this is done. And for every rule, there are 10,000 exceptions. Believe it or not, balance is very important in the setup of a violin. You notice the sound post here, and then behind the sound post is, is a piece of wood that's glued across the, le the length of the top of the instrument, and that's called the bass bar. And that also helps stabilize the arching of the instrument from the pressure of the strings. So now, the bass bar should be 1.5 millimeters within the bridge foot on the G-string side. And the sound post should also be 1.5 millimeters on bridge foot of the E-string side. So it is balanced given the fact that the bridge is centered on the instrument itself. We start there and then have the violinist play it. And not only do I listen to the sound, but I observe, I observe the player to see how they react to the sound of their violin or a violin they're trying. Because I could only listen to the sound, but we all know sound is practically the most objective thing in the entire universe. What I think sounds great, Amber might throw up at. And <laughs> I and, like this sound. And, <laughs> <laughs> and Amber could say, you know, Amber says, okay, it sounds like this. But my assistant Jen would come in here and says, no, it doesn't sound like that. It sounds like, it sounds like this. So mm -hmm. it's a very personal interaction between the instrument and the player. So I have them play. Usually it's just a scale. You know, you don't need to do a, uh, you know, a Carnegie Hall performance when you're, tr when you're adjusting a violin, at least not initially. I always, first I go for balance. I always make sure, try to achieve that all four strings, they have the, that they have their own characteristics, but they all are balanced throughout the scale of the instrument. Sometimes, like, the G will be very loud and the E will be very muted, for example. So moving the right. sound post around, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, usually the most challenging string to adjust on the violin is the, D, is the D string. If you want more power on the G and E, you bring the sound post closer to the treble F hole. And then if you wanted to balance out the A and D, you adjust closer to the saddle or closer to the nut. And then you work it from there. Not only are you dealing with the top of the sound post, but you're also dealing with the bottom of the sound post too. And a tenth of a millimeter can make a huge difference because any changes you make is going to change the vibrations, which will change the sound. And so, it's an interaction between me, the musician, and the instrument. But wouldn't I would it be worth it? Like if you were oh, going to yeah. spend a lot of money on yes. your instrument, if you, you if, just... If you're going to spend thousands of dollars, yeah. you, you absolutely need to go to a shop that has a 
good reputation for workmanship, for standing behind their instruments. I know we've, we've had this conversation before in how to, um, how, how to buy a violin. My violin teacher was a former associate concert master of Philadelphia Orchestra, and he used to say he needs to feel, when he puts the violin under the chin, he needs to feel the vibrating instrument through his jaw. You know, he's, he was Italian and he said al dente, you know, to the teeth. When he got the feel of that vibrations through the spectrum of the instrument, then he knew that the violin was performing at its optimal, at its optimal level, you know. Is adjusting the sound post gonna make you play better in tune? No, that's, that's you as the musician has to do it, so. <laughs> Darn. You know, <laughs> sorry about that, everybody. You know, this will only do what you tell it to do. And uh, there's a story, Yasha Heifetz. Now, some people don't know who Yasha Heifetz is, but in the first three quarters of the 20th century, he was considered the greatest violinist there was. And I think it was in the late 40s, early 50s, he was finished playing a recital. And a patron came up to him and said, Mr. Heifetz, your violin sounds beautiful. And he was holding it at the time and he picked it up, put it to his ear and he said, funny, I don't hear a thing. So just as an experience, when I come to try instruments with my students, there's been many times where we'll whittle it down from, you know, 10 instruments to maybe three or four instruments. And then we're looking at them in a closer detail. And there's, there's moments where I'll notice the D string sounds muted, mm -hmm. the E string sounds really loud, the G string sounds very muted or whatever. Like, and so in those moments, that's when I, I run back and I grab you and we, and you tweak it. And it makes a huge difference. It completely opens up the sound. I've gotta let David get back to work, but I do have a question. Mm -hmm. Should we try some violins? Do you have time to kind of move the sound post around a teeny bit just to demonstrate with your... Of course. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah.